The introduction of the basic programming language for the Altair marked a major step forward in the personal computing revolution. It marked the first time that a programming environment was available on a personal computer. Suddenly, the Altair went from being a hobbyist curiosity to a useful, customizable tool that a scientist or engineer or, or teacher could use to solve any particular problem they needed. It was, for the first time, computing power in the hands of individuals. It was also a significant event because of the authors of that original version of BASIC, a couple of young guys named Paul Allen and Bill Gates. Those were the primary authors of the code and, of course, went on to start Microsoft. Now this first version of BASIC is called 4K BASIC because it fit in just 4K of RAM and then left a little bit of space for the user's program. Pretty strict hardware requirements in those days, but given that it fits in just 4K of RAM, it was a pretty capable BASIC. Now that uh, computer that you would have used in those days would have had, of course, at least 4K of RAM and at least one serial port that would have hooked to most typically a teletype. Over that one serial port, the teletype was your operator's console, and with the paper tape that was part of the teletype, it served as your mass storage device. You could load BASIC from paper tape, and you could save and load programs you might have written to the paper tape. We're going to duplicate that environment here today, and go ahead and go through the process of getting 4K BASIC up and running. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn on the computer, and do a reset. And at this point, we have an empty computer as always. It doesn't have BASIC in it, nor does it even know how to read from the teletype. So the first thing we're going to have to do is put in a program, typically called a bootstrap loader, to read the paper tape. Now, the Altair paper tapes typically contained a second, more sophisticated loader at the start of the tape called a checksum loader. That loader then turned around and finished reading the rest of the tape, which had BASIC on it. Altair gave us code in the uh, user manuals for the bootstrap loader, so you didn't have to come up with that yourself. The bootstrap loader varied depending on the version of BASIC you had and the type of card you were using to hook to your teletype. In our case, we need the bootstrap loader for 4K BASIC version 3.2, and we need the bootstrap loader for our serial card, the 88SIO board. And if you look in the... Um, support material link for this video, you will see a listing of the bootstrap loader we're going to key in. If you found us directly on YouTube, look down below the video in the description field. You may have to expand it, and you'll see a link to that listing as well. All right, so let's go ahead and put in this bootstrap loader. I'm going to enter it at location zero. First byte is 41. Deposit that into location zero. Next byte is 256. And now we can use deposit next to put that in the next location. Next two bytes are 17 and 61. 17, 61, 22 and 0, 0, 333 and 0, 0. All right, 17 and 330. 17, 33. 333 and 1, 275 and 310, see, am I right? 310, okay. 55 and 167, 167, 300 and 351, 300, zero. 351, and finally 3 and 0. All right, let's go back to the beginning. We'll examine location 0 and see how we did. Should have 41 and 256. There's 41, 256, 17 and 61, 61, 22 and 0, 22, 0, 333 and 0. 17 and 330, 333 and 1, 275 and 310, 55 and 167, 300 and 351, and finally 3 and 0. All right, so it looks like we put the program in correctly. Now we can get ready to run it. So we'll go back to location 0 by examining all the switches at 0. 
but before we run it, we have to use the upper 8 bits to, set, to tell the loader and BASIC what type of serial board we have in there. Again, you look in the manual for your particular version of BASIC and loader, and what we see is that for our serial board, the switch settings are actually all zeros. Other boards might have had a different switch combination, but for the SIO board, the switch settings are all zero. So now we have told BASIC when it starts running and the loader what type of serial port it's going to be running into. All right, so are we ready to go yet? Almost. For this particular serial board, the uh, instructions say to start the paper tape reading first and then hit run on the computer. And we'll explain why that's the case in just a minute. All right, so let's get the paper tape going. I'll get that started here. And then as soon as we start the paper tape reading, we need to hit run. All right, paper tape's on its way. We'll hit run. All right, so at this point, we see the loader is running. And it'll run for about 25 seconds here while it loads the leader on the tape and that checksum loader. Once it finishes reading those first 250 bytes or so at just 10 characters per second, that's why it takes about 25 seconds, you'll see the light pattern change. Now we see what's running is the second stage loader. Now this pattern of lights is actually specified in the user manual to let you know things are going right. When you see 7647, it says you know the loader is busy loading right. Okay, so we're chugging away at a full 10 characters per second. We've got another four minutes or so to go, and we're going to do a video cut so you don't have to watch this whole thing. But before we do, let's explain a couple things. First of all, you may have noticed you don't hear a teletype chugging along in the background or a paper tape reader noise. The reason is because, unfortunately, I don't have one. Instead, I'm using a terminal emulator running at 110 baud, just like a teletype, and I am sending an exact duplicate image of the tape, paper tape over the same serial port that the console is hooked to. So I'm, the Altair doesn't know it's not a teletype. All right, this is a pretty useful way to do things in the modern world because it uh, allows us to have some of the peripherals that we really couldn't afford otherwise. All right, now this is going to take several minutes. Uh, one thing to note is that because of buffering, the screen you see showing progress will actually disappear and say everything's done uh, long before it's really done transmitting all the characters. It's another minute or two after this disappears before it actually is completed sending the tape. So it's a bit confusing, but you have to be patient and just wait for the Altair to finish uh, loading and basic to take over. Now the other question I wanted to address was why did we have to start this paper tape first and then run the program? What you'll find is that other serial boards say run the program first then start the paper tape. The reason is because the type of UART that is on the board. The UART in the SIO board did not have the ability to be reset ahead of time. So if there was any character left in the UART from anything you were doing previously, that would upset the uh, leader detection logic in the bootstrap loader and it would jump thinking it was loading the boots or the, excuse me the checksum loader before it was really in place. So by starting the paper tape first, we've guaranteed that the program doesn't see anything but valid leader bytes. Other types of boards could be reset um, before receiving any data and that that way we knew there was no garbage data. All right, we're going to do a video cut so we don't have to watch the next uh, four minutes or three minutes of nothing happening and we'll come back to this uh, place as soon as basic is up and running. All right, we're back. The load has completed, and we can tell by looking at the front panel of the Altair that it's no longer in the checksum loader. It is now running a different pattern of lights, which indicates that BASIC is up and running. And more importantly, if you look over at your terminal or on your teletype, you'll see the memory size prompt. That comes up uh, to let you know that BASIC is trying to initialize. Now, if you'll notice here, memory size looks a little garbled. That's because 4K BASIC uses the most significant bit of many bytes that it stores, including strings and program memory, in order to use every last bit of memory. Uh, when a teletype got these bytes with the upper bit manipulated, it didn't care, it just stripped it off and printed the normal character. However, our terminal emulator here is using that to generate some oddball characters in the ASCII character set. And so what we have to do now that we have transferred the program, we needed the full eight bits for doing the paper tape. Now that that's complete, we can go into the emulator and set it to be uh, such that it ignores the seventh bit as well. And I've already done that, so from here on out, the prompts will look correct. All right, to the memory size prompt, you can just hit return, 
and basic will size memory for you. However, here in 4K basic, it never assumed anybody would have a full 64K of RAM with no holes. Um, but if you happen to do that, it would actually loop all the way through memory and come back and overwrite itself. So for the sake of the old days, we're going to put in a memory size of just 4K. All right, there's 4096. Terminal width has to do with output. The input terminal width or the input line length was fixed at 72. You couldn't put anything longer than that. So we'll just accept the default. Want sign. You could save some memory by eliminating a few of the um, trigonometric functions, for example. But we'll go ahead and hit yes here to, uh, to accept that. All right, 726 bytes free for programs. 110 baud certainly is fast, isn't it? All right, we're up and running. Let's see what uh, happens. We'll just do an immediate command. Print 2 plus 2. And we've got our answer. Now, 4K Basic only likes uppercase, so you're going to want to turn, in, turn on your cap locks. So you put in lowercase, you'll get syntax error. Um, so leave cap locks on for 4K Basic, and you'll be up and running, ready to do some programming. And in the next video, we'll do just that. We'll start right here and see how to put in a program, save it to paper tape, and load from paper tape. All right, the computer used in the demonstration today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and the feel, features, performance, and the limitations of a real Altair 8800. But it does it with modern hardware on the inside. That way, it's a little bit less expensive and more reliable than working with a vintage computer. Also, you don't have to worry about damaging something that's museum quality. You can just go ahead and use it hands-on and really relive this exciting period in computing history. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.